إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهديه الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضل فلن تجله وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله وصفي من خلقه وحبيبه أشهد أنه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة ومحى الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلاة وسلاما على عبدك ونبيك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إلا تنصروه فقد نصره الله إذ أخرجه الذين كفروا ثاني اثنين ثاني اثنين إذ هما في الغار إذ يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن إن الله معنا وعن رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يبلغن هذا الأمر ما بلغ الليل والنهار ولا يترك ولا يترك الله بيت مضر ولا وبر إلا أدخله الله هذا الدين بعز عزيز أو ذل ذليل عز يعز الله به الإسلام وذل يذل به الله به الكفر أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام أما بعد أو praise to Allah All praise to Allah, the one, the only, the one who should be worshipped. I bear witness that he is the creator of this universe and he is the one who should be worshipped. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. True mercy sent to us. If you follow his path, inshallah, will be in Jannah. Amma bad, I know everyone here misses Abu Malik and I miss him too. But subhanallah, he has to travel and I'm taking his shoes, inshallah, his khutbah. Hopefully I can do better, like as, as good as him, inshallah. But today, like I talked last time, Abu talked about Hijrah. We are now finishing last week of 1443 from the Hijjah. And inshallah, next week we will start the new year, the new Hijrah year 1444. And always we need to reflect upon what's in our, our lives, what's happening. Yesterday I was watching a kind of a program and Someone won, yeah, I won something. And he is very happy, <laughs> I won it. And subhanAllah, I was thinking about it a little bit. Let's put a second here and talk, think about it a little bit. The Prophet ﷺ is a messenger. Everyone disagree, agree with that? Agree with that. The Prophet ﷺ is a messenger. And he came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had to do his job. He had to work hard. Then really, if I follow him, I'm doing wonderful. But why I should push myself? Why should I try hard? And if you think about it a little bit, the Sahaba did the same. The Sahaba, the Prophet left Mecca, left Mecca after 13 years of da'wah. 13 years of da'wah. He tried to convey the message. How many came to Islam? So many said 100, 200 people. That's it, are Muslims. That's all. Then really, if you look around and you think that you are 
not the majority, you are the minority, don't feel bad. Plus, I thought about it now, in the Quran, if you read in the Quran, across the Quran, when you read Kathir, it's always bad. We need Qaleel, it's always good. Always. Even one of the dua, when Sayyidina Umar was standing and someone said, Allahumma ja'ani min al-Qaleel. Sayyidina Umar told him, why are you making this dua? He said, oh, Amir al-Mu'min, you don't know? All the Qaleel are good. All the Qaleel are good. Allahumma ja'ani min al-Qaleel. الذين يلتزمون على الدين. Then the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام went to مدينة. Now if you think about it, like I always said, the Prophet three years before that he took the buraq. Buraq is an animal higher than the donkey, lower than the horse. He when he puts his foot, what he sees, then imagine how fast he goes. He went from مكة to مدينة. I'm sorry. From Mecca to the Bayt al-Maqdis in no time, seconds, he was there. Then really, Allah could have brought him this and said, okay, you want to go to Medina? No problem, get you the buraq and go. But the Prophet didn't do that. And always I think, why? Why the buraq wasn't there when the Prophet migrated from Mecca to Medina? Because he wants us to give the example, all of us here, everyone here, Migrated from back home somewhere, especially over 25, not like younger like you, young boys, that maybe you're born here, but no, us, old people like me, just over 25, and we came from back home, and the migration came. Then we need an example, what should we do? And the Prophet is the best example, I said, Sam. The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, came and created a whole new community whole new community the, the 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 arabs at that time they fight for a simple horse race if this horse won this horse they kill each other to create a friendship that we have here in this place in canada even it's hard coming from egypt from jordan from lebanon from syria from pakistan bangladesh Sri Lanka, whatever everyone has his own culture his own thinking it's hard to combine everyone under one umbrella. But we do that. We do that. We live with each other. We try. We try. Yes, mistakes will happen. And some Sahaba did some mistakes. And the Prophet was there to take care of mistakes. And then really, we have to work to migrate from bad to good. Migrate from the wrong to the right. And stand firm beside the right. That's what the Prophet did, alayhi salatu was salam. Then, let's go back to the Prophet. Like I told you, the Buraq was there, he could have taken him, but no. Plan, the first thing we learn from Hijrah, planning. Very well planned. Very well planned. Definitely with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The planning, the Prophet, the, the mushrikeen surrounded the house of the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam. What he did, first thing, Look at that. Even your enemies know you're right. Even the people who hate you know you're right. I'll give a simple example, even it's not related here. When Qawm Lut want to kick Sayyidina Lut out from, uh, from his house, what did he say? Even, <laughs> subhanAllah, you hear them, said, what are you talking about? <laughs> Get a Lut outside of your country, your place. Why? They are bad? They're doing something bad? They're killers? No, they're saying, not us. They are so clean. What? You're kicking someone out because he is so clean? Sometimes even the, kuf, the people who are kafirin saying something that, how come you say that? Even if you want to diss me, diss me good. But no. They said, he's, he, he's tahir. They hate Sayyidina Rasulullah and they put the money with him. All the money in Mecca was with the Prophet. They hate me, I'll take the money and go. Right? But the Prophet didn't do that. What did he do? He said, I'm leaving to Sayyidina Ali. I'm leaving, stay here in my, my place, my, my bed, and I'm leaving. How old is Sayyidina Ali at that time? 15, 16? 15, 16 years old. 15, 16. We, we tell him he's a kid. 
I'm sorry, we don't have any Islam kids. We have men. Kids, one, two years old, three years old. That's it. After that, we have men. That's it. And he was a man. He told him. And Sayyidina Ali narrated that this is the time that only night that he slept very nicely. And when he asked why, why you slept nicely? He said, the Prophet told me tomorrow, distribute the money. Then I know I'll live for tomorrow. Imagine that you sleep and you know you'll live for tomorrow. He lived at the nicest night. Even though the swords are outside to kill him. But still, obedience of the Prophet ﷺ. Then the Prophet planned. <clears throat> he took his friend. Then when you're traveling, choose your friend. Even in Arabic we say, As-Sadiq qabl al-Tariq. The friend before the, la the, the road. Because really you need someone to, comp to have your, be your companion. Teach, tell you when you're wrong. Take care of you when you're deviating. This is very important. <clears throat> this is some of the lessons we need to learn. A side lesson, I always like to say it. Abu Jahl. Who is Abu Jahl? Pharaoh of his ummah. Pharaoh of his ummah. This is the one who hated the Prophet the most. And he's surrounding the Prophet Alaihissalam house. And he said to the people, the people came to him and said, Abu Jahl, Akrima. his name is Akrima. Let's go in. Muhammad is there. We want to kill him. Let's open the door and kill him. Simple. Sounds familiar? Happening these days? Police comes in. Hit the door. And catch you. Catch whatever he was inside. Abu Jahl said, no. And the Arabs would say that I scared the women and kids. What? Women and kids? You want to kill your worst enemy. And you're, you're worried about scaring women and kids sometimes i i envy abu jahl because of his morals some of the people in this in this area who claim they are muslims they they, they need their his morals they kick they scare they do whatever bad things but he didn't because he has some morals even though we hate him until today we curse him until today but still we have to say that he has morals we need to apply these morals in our lives. Don't scare anyone. Then come back again. The Prophet ﷺ, he went planning. He went to Medina. Medina, he went to the other side. He, he wanted to go to Medina. He went to the other side of Medina. Towards the other north. South. Sorry. South. He went south. Medina is north. He went south. And he went to the Ghar and stayed there. For the Mushrikeen to to deviate them from the right path, from his path. And the mushrikeen came to the cave. And who is the most scared should be? Should the Prophet, right? No, the Prophet wasn't scared at all. Who was scared? Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he was scared of himself. Someone will say he was scared of himself to be killed. No, he said that. Ya oh, Prophet, if they kill me, I'm one man. If he kill you, it's your ummah. And the Prophet wants him to be, feel nice. Sometimes you want, again, we need to reflect. We don't take history as history. We need to reflect. If you have your friend, sometimes he just needs a support. Wallahi, sometimes in my life even, I'm older than some of you here. I sometimes deviate. Sometimes I feel bad. Sometimes I need just a simple support. And then my brother come to me. Not my brother from my mother and father. My brother, one like you, came to me. Why are you sad? Come back. I come to Juma only and I felt very down. But subhanAllah, he came and supported me and said, don't worry, life is not that bad. Help, stand. That's what you need, a brother. You can be the brother when some, your brother in Islam is down. Support him. Go and stand beside him. He needs you. He needs every one of us. Sometimes simple words, wallahi, can make a difference in our lives. A simple thing your, your kids, don't worry. Your kids are good. You need, I know, they are deviating now, but don't worry, they'll come back. They'll come back. He needs these words, just simple words from you. That's what the Prophet did with Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Ya Abu Bakr, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful. Ya Abu Bakr. Ma dhannuka bithnaini, Allahu thalithuhuma. What do you think that two people, Allah is the third. 
Can this apply to us? If you are in the right path, remember the hadith, seven categories. What's one of the categories? وَرَجُلَانِ تَحَابَّ فِي اللَّهِ اجْتَمَعَ عَلَيْهِ وَتَفَرَّقَ عَلَيْهِ Even if you love each other in the sake of Allah, in the sake of Allah, Allah will be with us. Supporting us, taking care of us, guiding us. Then it's up to you to be on the right path. Then, Sayyidina Rasulullah and Sayyidina Abu Bakr went. And who came behind them? Suraqa, a knight. Suraqa was a knight that he was well known. Was well known. And Suraqa, Sayyidina Suraqa, I have to say Sayyidina because he's a Sahabi after that he became a Muslim. At that time, he went after the ransom. The Mushrikeen said that if you catch Muhammad alive or dead, we'll give you 100 camels. Someone say 100 camels is not too much. No, 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 100 camels is too much. Even now, 100 camels, imagine the camel was the Rolls Royce at that time of the cars. Now imagine even the price of the camel. $10,000, 100 camels, how much is it? Compute yourself. It's too much money, too much money. And he needs the money. He went after the Prophet ﷺ, ran after him. He used to get the horse, run. And he tripped. He's a knight. He doesn't trip on a horse. Second, trip. Third, no, hold. Something is wrong here. Oh, Muhammad, give me peace. I'll come to you. He said, yes, come. He came. And he looked. Sayyidina Rasulullah looked at him. Now, imagine with me. The Prophet is running. People I want to kill him. And in that time, and Suraqa is the one who's going to kill him. And the Prophet gave him a glad tiding. Then really, it's so dark. So dark outside there. So dark. Still hope is there. Don't lose hope. Allah is there. Who, do, who they don't believe in Allah. I always give this example. When I came here into Oakville from 15 years, my son was at that time in high school. A girl jumped in front of a train. A beautiful girl. And they told my son, come, why she jumped in front of my train? My train? He said, her boyfriend left her. I said, what? She's beautiful. She can ask many others. Uh, sometimes I ask normally, like a Canadian. Uh, no, I need to understand, not Islamically, but Canadian. I need to understand why this is happening. And he said, she couldn't handle that. We Muslims can handle because we have someone up there taking care of us. If you have any calamity, there's Allah. Go to him, raise your hand. Oh Allah, help me. I have my kids going astray. Oh Allah, help me. My wife is giving me hard time. Oh Allah, help me. My husband is giving me hard time. Oh Allah, help me. My financial is going bad. Oh Allah, help me. The Prophet والسلام, in the hardest calamity told Suraqa. What did he say? Suraqa. What do you think that you will get the bracelets of Kisra? <laughs> Who's Kisra? Kisra is one of the highest at that time. Like the, the, uh, at that time, there were two, emp two empi empires, Kisra and Qaisar, Persian and Byzantine world. And he tells his, this man in front of him, you will get the bracelets of Kisra. And uh, Suraqa looked at him and said, Kisra bin Sharwan. <laughs> he thought that Kisra someone else. Uh, Kisra bin uh, Ayo? Yes. Write it down to me. He wrote it down. Said Abu Bakr wrote a paper and it's yours. Okay. What do you want from me? Tell people, deviate people away from me. And subhanallah, <clears throat> to run after this story, Sayyidina Suraqa lived until Sayyidina Umar time. And say, at that time, Suraqa was fighting the Byzantine uh, Empire. And the Persian Empire went down. They got the bracelets, gold, emeralds, Everything. And when Sayyidina Omar looked at this, he remembered the hadith. Where is Suraqa? He's in Byzantium. Bring him in. He came. Imagine gold is haram for Muslim to put on. But this is the Prophet told him you have to. And Omar commanded him, put the bracelets on and go to Medina and narrate the hadith. And he went in and narrated the hadith. Definitely he took them out after that. But this is inside the calamity, there is always light if you search for it. This is very important messages. The last message I want to remember, when we came here, when the Prophet came to Medina, let's get the example from the Prophet first. What he did, 
he built the mosque. He took care and make everyone come to the mosque. When we came to Canada, Alhamdulillah, we built a mosque. And we were trying everyone to join. And the youth back there and in front of me here, we want to get them in the mosque. Lead and help and support. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لكم فاستغفروا يا فوز المستغفرين اللهم اغفر لنا ونرى مصرافا نافيا من عدد فنان صحيح اللهم ارحمنا اللهم اغفرنا اللهم ارفع بخطف طبعا اللهم اشفر طبعا اللهم ادنا تغير فيك رجل نافيا اللهم ادنا واتبنا إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شهور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا أما بعد Here is some of the things that highlight I believe I want to talk about I told you in the beginning the Prophet عز السلام was when you hear the Prophet, you say, even in your heart, even in the Jummah, even in prayer, some of the ulama said, don't say it loudly, but if you hear the Prophet name, you say, when you're praying, just in your heart, don't say it loud. Okay? When السلام, moved, the Sahaba, he has to command to do something. Why the Sahaba did that too? Sometimes I ask myself, why we have to push ourselves a little bit? Why? Why the Sahaba did this? Why the ulama, the people who work in the sake of Allah, the, the brother who came here almost an hour before everyone who leave, uh, half an hour after everyone leave, why? Why he's running? Why he's doing what he's doing? He's asking what? He's asking any one of us something? No. He's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even who works here, the brother who were trying to work here, if you have the right intention that you're doing it for the sake of Allah, Wallahi, you will be rewarded high. Even one of you, any of you, when we come here, you park right in the right spots, you try your best to help and support, you will be rewarded. Just simple things. The Sahaba were not all Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Omar. If you count the Sahaba, how many do we know? 10, 15, 20? The Sahaba were 124,000. 124,000 Sahabi. Do you know the names? Even Sayyidina Omar himself, in one of the Ghazwa he came that he told him and Nu'man ibn Mukrim died and other Muslimin, other people. And the Prophet Sayyidina Omar cried and he said, Allah knows them. Allah knows every one of us. Do your part. Don't worry about it. Wallahi, do your part. Sometimes even when I think, before I come, I came here almost 25 years now. When I came, if, subhanAllah, if I didn't come, what will happen? What will happen? Is my life will be the same as me? Will I see every one of you? No. Maybe I went back to home and see other people. But subhanAllah, Allah asked me to see every one of you and you are asked to see me. And stand, what, did, did I do mistake? Come at me and say, you did something wrong. Support. Support unsur akhaka zaliman or mazluman. Qalu ya Rasulullah arifna kaifa nansuruhu mazluman fa kaifa nansuruhu zulman qalu ya zulman. Support your brother if he's right or wrong. And the Sahaba said we know how to uh, oppressed. Oppressed or not uh, or oppressor. The Sahaba said we know how to help him when he's oppressed. Someone is attacking him or supporting. How can we help him when he's oppressor? Stop him. Talk to him. Try your best. With the idea that you need the salih, you need to guide. So many now time, many people because of the new fatwa in this world, many girls are taking off the hijab. Many men are drinking wine around us. We see that. What should we do? You're a kafir, you're out of Islam. This is help or support or kicking them out more? Kicking them out more, don't do that. Don't do that. If a lady took off her hijab, or a man is drinking wine, or doing something bad, support him. Yeah, you're doing a sin, come back. Pray, come back. If you're doing the, taking off the hijab, come back. Pray, do your best, try, start. My son was asking me, one of his brothers, one of, not uh, my brother, my son, another, another Muslim guy came to him, I said, I didn't pray for 10 years, what can I do? He didn't pray for 10 years, what can he do? I cannot pray again. He said, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Start from today, move on. Try your best to move on. Catch up. Don't worry about the catch up before. Try to do whatever coming with an intention Allah will forgive. 
The shaitan always comes to deviate us, to take us out of the right path. That's his job. فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَوْ يَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ he, he swears with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for the youth here, they have to know that shaitan knows Allah more than any of us. He knows he's there. He saw him. But he didn't, he had kibr. He couldn't obey him. Are we doing the same? When someone is going away, do we try to support and bring him back, try our best? That's what the Sahaba were doing. That's what the Hijrah, which is coming next week. The Prophet migrated from Mecca to Medina to support the others. The, 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 that's the idea we need to work on. Supporting each other, helping each other. Now I have two things to say. How the Hijrah calendar started? Everyone should know that, especially the youth. The Hijrah calendar started because Sayyidina Omar wanted to create a calendar. There, there are so many calendars out there, out there, like the Persian, the Egyptian, the Chinese, the Roman, all the calendars you can think about. How to create a calendar. And subhanAllah, the one who's, who, who created that, a Jew came to the, uh, Sayyidina Omar and told him there is an ayah in the Quran stated that if we have it, we'll make a celebration day out of it. He said, what's this ayah? He said, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْنَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمْ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ This is the ayah in the Quran. And Sayyidina Umar said, I know where is the ayah. I know when it was revealed. It's revealed in Arafat. In the 10th of the, uh, in the nine, tenth of, tenth of the Hijjah. 9th of the Hijjah. In Arafat. 9th of the Hijjah. In the last year. 10th. And uh, they said, they accepted that they will start the year from Muharram. Why? Because the Hujjaj went back and will start the calendar from that day. And they pushed it back to the time of the Prophet migration. Because this is a time that it changed our lives. Changed everyone's lives. Migrated the Prophet from Mecca to Medina. Lastly, but not least, you have there, oh, two things. One, there is no ibadah. There is no special prayer or special fasting. Nothing. Pray normally, fast normally, whatever you can do. It's okay, Monday and Thursdays, nothing there. Because some people will kill, oh, haram. no. If it's not in Islam, don't, if a prophet didn't say it, don't do it. He's the most biased person in the world, in our lives. If he didn't do it, are you more creative than him? No. Then what should you do? You should follow his footsteps. Lastly, the 10th of Muharram. 10th of Muharram will be on almost in the 8th of August. What's the reward for the youth? One day, it's equal to a bonus of a whole year. Everyone likes bonuses, right? And you wake up almost by noon or by Asr prayer. Plan to fast that day. Plan to fast that day. It will be, uh, I believe, a Monday or Tuesday. Try to fast that day. Try. It's rewarding high. Someone will say, like the, my sons here are young. He said, I don't have to. I'm still young. It's not written on me. Imagine that you get extra. Imagine now, you don't have to work, all of you, young people, and I give you $1,000. Will you be happy? Mm, I see a smile there. Yeah, good. Just a simple thing. I give you $1,000. You don't have to pay. You don't have to pay rent. You don't have to do things. But you get $1,000. You'll smile. Imagine you get a whole year of hasanat to support you and help you. This is an important thing you can do. Remember that everything happens the Prophet do is a guideline for us. It's not for him only, for us. الله أقفل الله أكبر الشكوى الله